Hi, my dear students. Good morning to one and all. This is Vengatesh, Department of CSC, DBSIT, Kavali. Now, in this video, we are going to study about the heap management. So, what is a heap management? What is a memory manager? So, what are the various properties of memory manager? All these things we are going to discuss now. So, what is a heap? So, heap is a portion of memory that holds data during the lifetime of the program. In the heap, the static memory requirements such as global variables will be allocated space. In addition, any memory that is supposed to be used to throw the program is also stored in heap. That's why we can say that managing the heap is very important. So next coming to the memory manager. So what is a memory manager? So memory manager is a special software that manages the allocation and deallocation of memory. So whereas coming to basic functions of memory manager there are two basic functions of memory manager are there so first one is allocation second one is deallocation so what is a allocation so allocation in the sense when a program requests memory for a variable then the memory manager produces a chunk of heap memory of required size so what is a deallocation so deallocation in the sense the memory manager deallocates the space and add it to the pool of free space so that it can be reused that means it can be used again so what are the properties of memory manager whereas coming to properties of memory manager there are three properties of memory manager are there so first one is space efficiency second one is program efficiency third one is low overhead so if a program manager has space efficiency then it should minimize the total heap space required by a program whereas if a memory manager has a program efficiency it should make better use of space to run the program faster to increase the efficiency whereas low over, low overhead so if a memory manager has a low overhead then it its allocation and deallocation should be efficient we can say that allocation and deallocation should be efficient next whereas coming to memory hierarchy of a computer so what is a memory hierarchy of a computer so if you see the diagram here there is a structure of memory hierarchy of a computer see here memory hierarchy of a computer we have register and a cache and a physical memory and a virtual memory along with the typical sizes and a typical access time see here memory hierarchy consists of a series of storage elements with the smaller faster ones closer to the processor and the larger slower ones further away here a processor has a small number of registers whose contents are under the control of software next it has one or more level of cache usually made out of static RAM that are kilobytes to several megabytes in size. The next level of hierarchy is the physical or main memory made out of hundreds of megabytes or gigabytes of dynamic RAM. The physical memory is then backed up by virtual memory which is implemented by gigabytes of disks see here if you see the in this diagram see the uh, individual uh, access time as well as individual uh, sizes are given if you take the register the register access time is one nanosecond whereas the register at uh, size is 32 volts that means the register can store the data up to 32 volts here what is nothing but a what is a 2 bytes it means 16 bits whereas catches are divided into two types first level catch and the second level catch the first level catch will have the access time of 5 to 10 nanoseconds whereas size is 16 to 64 kilobytes whereas in second level catch 
the access time is 40 to 60 nanoseconds whereas the storage the size is 128 kilobytes to 4 megabytes as well as if you take physical memory the size is 256 mb to 2 gb whereas access time is 100 to 150 nanoseconds whereas finally if you take virtual memory or we can say that it is a disk the size is more than 2 gb and at the same time access time is 3 to 15 ms see here the data is in this hierarchy the data is transferred as blocks of continuous storage to amortize the cost of access larger blocks are used with the slower levels of the hierarchy between main memory and cache in the sense between physical memory and cache the data is transferred in blocks known as cache lines which are typically from 32 to 256 bytes long between virtual memory virtual memory in the sense disk between disk and main memory the data is transferred in blocks known as pages typically between 4k and 64k bytes in size see next next in this one we are going to discuss about the locality locality in programs so what is a locality in programs so now we will discuss about the locality of programs see most of the programs exhibit a high degree of locality that is they spend most of the time executing a relatively small fraction of the code and touching only a small fraction of the data see there are two types of localities are there first one is a temporal locality next one is spatial locality so we can say that a program has a temporal locality if the memory locations it accesses are likely to be accessed again within a short period of time whereas coming to spatial locality we can say that a program has a spatial locality if memory locations close to the location accessed or likely also to be accessed within a short period of time the conventional wisdom is that programs spend 90% of their time executing 10% of the code so that's why we can say that programs often contain memory instructions that are never executed programs built with components and libraries use only a small fraction of the provided functionality only a small fraction of the code that could be invoked is actually executed in a typical run of the program finally the typical program spends most of its time executing innermost loops and tight recursive cycles in a program so thank you thank you very much